And now for something completely different, Madagascar. Our first sight of Madagascar after crossing the Mozambique Channel. The first impressions from the air are of the intensity of cultivation and human habitation. We stop at Ladik Artisans Market on the way to our hotel in Anatananarivo. The Malagasy language tends to long musical words. The locals refer to their capital as Tana. Our dinner entertainment is a talented trio playing homemade traditional instruments. It's Easter morning. We're greeted by an Easter baobab tree as we enter the restaurant. Our group is splitting into three today. One to Anjanjavi in the north, another to Barenti in the south, and we're headed to Perne in the east. On the road out of Tana, we see architecture influenced by the French colonial rule. Rice is the staple food here. Rice paddies seem to occupy all the low-lying ground. The rice is about ready to harvest. They get two harvests a year here. Ox carts are a common mode of transportation, even in Tana. About halfway to Perine, we stop by a private zoo to experience the fauna of Madagascar up close. The Nile crocodile is interesting, but you can see them all over Africa. It's Madagascar's chameleons that we came to see. The pygmy leaf chameleon is the smallest chameleon in the world. Then they bring out the snakes. Sherry had a bit of a reputation after this. The one crawling up her arm is the tree boa. Then on to the frogs. Here are two of the many species of millipede in Madagascar. In his hand is a pill millipede. The female comet moth has a wingspan of over 5 inches and a length of 9 inches. The males are even bigger with a 9 inch wingspan. If you look closely you'll see a stick insect. Chris tries to strike up a conversation with his new friend. This is a tenric a hedgehog-like mammal unique to Madagascar. Eventually we get to Vicona Lodge near Perine and the Anasibi Montadia National Park. After we get settled in our cottages, it's time to head for Lemur Island via canoe. The black and white ruffed lemurs greet us from the treetops. Brown lemurs are much mellower. They know we have their favorite food, bananas. And soon they're our new best friends. There's only one Diadem Chifaka on the island. But the award for cutest lemur goes to the eastern bamboo lemur. They weigh about five pounds and are about a foot long with a tail that is at least that long.
We drag ourselves away from our new friends, the lemurs. It's time for dinner. After dinner, we take a night walk. We see a mouse lemur and a tenric, but not good enough to photograph. But some nocturnal chameleons hold still. In the morning, we hike into the national park to look for birds and whatever else we can find. Initially, bugs are easier to find than birds. Then we start to see the birds. This is a day gecko with no English common name, but he's no common gecko either. Then we see a bamboo lemur with his favorite food. We go to another part of the park to find the Indri, the largest lemur. Indries throw their heads back and let out a haunting call. In the afternoon, we go back to visit our lemur buddies on the island. The rough lemurs greet us again from the treetops. The bamboo lemurs are still cute. Diadem Safaka is still lonely, but he did get his back scratched. The brown lemurs have had their fill of bananas. Sherry and I are busy watching the antics of the brown lemurs. The rest of the group are in the canoes headed for another island. What we missed are ringtail lemurs. These pictures are from Mike and Chris. They also visit a crocodile farm and see a fusa, the only large carnivorous predator on Madagascar. But Sherry and I do a little exploring of the area on our own. Entertainment tonight is some local musicians, singers, and dancers. In the morning, it's time to return to Tana. We'll be back to visit Madagascar and its wonderful wildlife. About halfway to Tana, we pull over to watch the rice harvest. It has to be hard work. Cutting the rice, then carrying it to the road to load into ox carts. A red foodie does a little rice harvesting too. Madagascar has its challenges. Charcoal is still a major fuel, leading to deforestation. But food is plentiful and looks to be of good quality. I can't speak for this meat, but what we had was good. Transport is fuel efficient, and the people are friendly. On our first night in Madagascar, Steve Goodman, a noted biologist who has spent his life studying this place, was very upbeat about the future. In spite of the population density, there are still wild places and new species being found. Besides great memories of our time with the lemurs and the chameleons, we'll remember Madagascar with a wooden box inlaid with a baobab tree, two ammonite fossils, and a toy car made from a three horses beer can, the local brew. <laughs>